to kind of just tell us your story? Yeah, so um, I'm Brianne. Uh, my husband's name is Jordan and our dog is Daisy. We adopted her from the shelter in, I wanna say 2019 or 2020. 2019. Um, okay. And she, was a really sweet puppy and then she ended up showing some um, reactivity and food aggression and I kind of tried to work with it on my own and um, she's a hound dog and so I grew up with hound dogs and I was like oh like the food thing is just a hound dog thing like it's not a big deal and then um, we moved to Blackfoot and she would always get into the trash and I called her name one day because I could hear her in the trash can and I called her name and said, Daisy, stop. And she came charging out of the room and um, bit me, like attacked me and bit me on the leg. And um, my husband came home that night and he said, like, this is this is the last straw. Like, you either have to, like, we have to do something about it or we can't keep the dog anymore. And I love Daisy. And so there she is. There she is. Um, <laughs> and so I did a lot of research and um, somebody that, I, I think I just overheard in the teacher's lounge one day, somebody said something about scotch pines. And so I um, went online and immediately booked a private session and the group training session. And um, I was honestly kind of terrified of my own dog. And by the end of the mm -hmm. training, like she's, she's my best friend now. And she can, I mean, we just have that, that bond now. Mm -hmm. Um, so was she a puppy when you brought her home or was she, uh, she, she was about six months old. She was six months old. And did you pick her cause you were, uh, experienced with hounds or was there something about her that kind of just drew you to Daisy? I actually went to the shelter looking for a different dog because that I had seen on Facebook and okay. my husband saw her and she reminded him of his childhood dog and fell in love with her. Um, I did grow up with hounds, um, so I, I am familiar with the breed, um, mm -hmm. but not her specific type of hound. I grew up with beagles. Okay. She's, she's mostly training walker coon hounds, and so different breeds, but still, I, I did grow up with hounds. Okay. Um, so with her, did you have um, some time between bringing her home and her starting to show you some issues or were did you bring her home and then you immediately started having issues with food um aggression or anything like that the food I didn't see until a couple months later the thing that we immediately noticed was her anxiety um okay when we would leave the house she would just howl and howl and howl and it didn't matter if we were out of the room for five minutes or if we were gone for five hours she she would howl and she would defecate in her kennel every single time we left. Like there was immediately some um, anxious behaviors that we saw, but the food aggression we didn't see until she was a little bit more comfortable with us. Okay. I remember you coming to that private lesson and I know you both kind of were, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I know you were really hopeful. It seemed like you were really hopeful, but also just really scared of her. Um, and you showed me the bite she gave you. And I, I remember sitting there and going, okay, sometimes people come to me and it's kind of the last ditch effort before they have to figure something out. Were you hopeful enough that you were like, we'll do anything she say, says, or was it kind of like, we'll just hope it works? Or how did you feel coming into that private lesson? I was hopeful because as much as I was afraid of her, I love my dog. And so I didn't want to have to, because it wasn't like we were just going to give her to somebody else. We didn't want to give a dog that was going to bite someone else to another family. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was like, we were talking about like behavioral euthanasia because it was, it was that bad. Like I was afraid to be in the house with my dog. And so I was hopeful because I didn't want that to happen. And so I was like, I'm going to do whatever it takes. Like if she tells mm -hmm. me I have to spend three hours outside training my dog in the middle of winter, I'll do it. Because mm -hmm. I, I didn't want her to have to be put down. I know I sent you home and then I emailed you and then I got an email back from you fairly quickly. How fast do you feel like you were able to make some progress with her after we met for that first session? 
I feel like I saw progress in like the first week. Um, because she, and it was terrifying. Like I, she had to be muzzled every time I was alone with her because she never really showed that type of aggression with my husband. Um, Mm -hmm. but, um, she, she had to be muzzled every time it was just me home because I was that afraid she was going to bite me. And she showed a little bit of aggression and we did exactly what you told us to do. And the next time I went to feed her, she showed less aggression. And it wasn't like it was one and done and it was solved. Mm -hmm. It was almost immediate that that I saw progress. I remember you coming to class each week um, with her muzzled and you were just like all in. But what do you think was um, the hardest part of everything that you've done with her? it was me being consistent was the hardest part because um, we lived in Blackfoot at the time and we were both working in Idaho Falls. And so I was commuting a long ways, both ways. And by the time I got home every day, I was just exhausted. And I did not want to, like, I just wanted to take my shoes off and sit on the couch for a minute, but mm-hmm. I didn't. Um, there, there was a park right across from the house we were living in. And as soon as I got home every day, she knew the routine. She'd walk right over to the door and wait for me to put her collar and her leash on. And we'd go across the street to the park and we'd work for at least an hour every day. And that was the hardest part was just getting up every day and going and practicing and having training sessions. Do you feel like those training sessions with her helped you um, bond with her a little bit differently or helped you not be so afraid of her? Is there, was it a process that took some time for you to like gain trust in her or was that something that you started um, fairly quickly? Um, I think it was a process for sure because I, I don't think that we could have done what we did unless we had um, bonded during those training sessions and I remember like because you told us like practice in different different situations don't just go to the same place every day and so we would walk different routes around Blackfoot and we would go to to the park at at different times if um, like on the weekends when I didn't have work we'd go at different times and if I looked out the window and I could see there were people there I'd go because I wanted her to practice around people and um, I I remember there was these two obnoxious dogs that lived next door to us. And every time we would come out, they would run up to the fence and they would bark and bark and bark and bark. And they would, um, they were kind of fence reactive. Mm -hmm. And um, we couldn't even let Daisy out into the yard when we first moved there because they would just bite at the fence. And um, so I made it one of our goals as we were training that we were going to be able to walk past that house and Daisy was just going to look at me the whole time she wasn't going to pay attention to the dogs Mm -hmm. and uh hey leave it um and I remember like celebrating one day because we got down that street and she just looked at me the whole time and I don't feel like we could have done that unless we had done the other training sessions every day that were creating that bond Mm -hmm. because she she just looked at me the whole time and I like I got home and like started crying because it was, it was such a, such an accomplishment that I went from a dog who was aggressive towards me and, and biting me to a dog that looked at me instead of trying to fight the dogs that were being Mm -hmm. reactive. Um, I love that story. That's, I remember you posting, I think we had a Facebook group at that time. I remember you posting all your little, um, adventures with her and I, you've shared so much on just our Facebook page of like the adventures that you've had with her over the last, um, couple of year, at least year and a half now. And I just am amazed. Um, I'm just amazed with how far you guys have come, um, in that short amount of time. I know, I think I told you this when you came in that day, I, with pandemic and everything like that, it just was exhausting in every, every part of my life, not just dog training, but like every part of my life. And I was at the point where I was just like, I don't know if this is something that I can continue to do. I don't know if it is worth it. And then I sat down with you and we had that really good session. And then I remember that email that you sent that first follow-up email. And I was like, this is why I do this. This is why I train. And I remember just having this new energy 
to put towards training. And you just gave me so much um, inspiration. I like willing you were to do everything in your power to keep her in your home. And um, I know lots of people are committed to doing that, but um, you just, I don't know, there's something about you that really inspired me. And I just really, really appreciate um I don't know, getting to know you and actually, and working with you. And so I just always, I see a picture of you and Daisy and it just makes me smile because I just remember how much, um, joy and how much, um, how hard I was like cheering you on, even if you didn't really know that I was, but I was like hardcore cheering you on all the way through, um, training. So, um, yeah. So, um, what do you think was the best part of the program or your best moment in the program with Daisy? Um, I think my proudest moment was when she won the top dog competition at the very last day, because I mean, people hardly even recognized her. Like I remember the very last day of training, people were like, is that the same dog that you had at the beginning? Because she, by the end of training, she could come to class without her muzzle on and she won the top dog competition and that was I don't know that was my like we did it like she she got it um and I think just seeing her little progress every week too was really satisfying um yeah I think I think the top dog was the best part yeah, that was, I was so excited for you when you won. Cause I just, like I said, I had seen you from like the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So was she, can you remind me, was she dog reactive too, or was it just, she was. she was okay. That's what I thought, but I couldn't remember. So that walking past that house where the dogs are freaking out, that is like amazing. That's a, that's a huge, huge, huge win. Um, so after the program, what's your life like now? How has it benefited you and how you are able to live your day-to-day -day life? And Hi. She's like, I want in too. Hi, Daisy. Um, <laughs> she is an awesome dog now. Like she's, I'm sitting on the bed. We live in a camper right now. And so um, there's not lots of room. So when usually when I'm on the bed, it's cuddle time, but uh, <laughs> She, my husband is always kind of amazed because I make her wait at the door um, before I let her out. And uh, the other day he opened the door and she didn't just run out. And he was like, where are you? Like, just go. And I was like, you have to tell her, okay. Like, she's not going to run out and say, okay. <laughs> and he said, okay. And then she, she ran out. And um, when he let her back in, she did the same thing. She waited until he said, okay, to come in. And it's like little things like that, that I'm always kind of surprised. Like she's, a good dog to live with now like not only is she not reactive she's she's fun to live with and um like this summer we went on a road trip to Oregon and we got to get out and go exploring and we did off leash like um Oregon's kind of kind of cool like at a lot of their rest stops you can go on little hikes cool. and um we did several of those and she just walked right next to us without her leash and I didn't have to worry about if somebody came around the corner what she was going to do or if there was another dog because I knew that she would she would listen um and we live we live on our friend's property right now on they have a, a cow farm and she was kind of uh chasing the cows around so I've gone out there a couple of times and done just quick like leave it training sessions mm -hmm. with the cows and she listens and she's an easily trainable dog now and just lots of fun to live with Oh, awesome. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, the last thing I like to ask is, was it, I, you worked really, really, really hard. Was it worth the time and effort you put into the program to get the bond that you have with her now? Absolutely. I mean, like I said earlier, um, she quite literally wouldn't be alive if it hadn't been for the program. And so it's, it's 100% worth it. And I recommend scotch pines to anybody who'll listen <laughs> thank it's, you it's it's that worth it to me like it it doesn't matter the money was worth it the time was worth it every single aspect of the program was worth it if you think that your dog is too far gone they're not there's you can always find I mean we we literally were thinking about putting Daisy down and 
I would be so sad if I had put her down and then later found the program and thought, what if that could have worked? So if you're on the fence, just do it.